three months into office, he fired its police chief on live television. From Gisto. And on the near west side, it sparks in, in Ohio City. Councilman there by the name of Bill Sullivan sparks a recall campaign, which seems to animosity between Kucinich administration and council increases after that. And he survives a recall, but later that year the city defa defaults. Um, was default more political than financial? It was a combination. It was it was a combination. We, I never thought we had to go into default. Um, the business, the business community. I remember when I would talk with Brock Weir and talk with people up at the Growth Association about it. And Dennis was close to the fellow that owned Bobby Brooks. I can't. Schulman. Uh, um, Saltzman. Saltzman. Maurice Saltzman. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Dennis was a friend with, and 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 Maury was. You know, he would never get a very wealthy guy, but to be around Dennis and that type of thing. And so you had, and I don't think Mari really wanted Dennis to do that, but he, he liked the, being around that. But we're in those guys. She look, man, you gotta, we got to save this town. So it was, but he wouldn't back off. He wouldn't back off. And, and I think he was determined to, to, to to take it through it, and so we had nothing to do, nothing else to do, but just to follow through the procedure on it. But but he was a he was a young man that that had his own ideas about what was right and what he was going to do, and we we suffered through that. But we were we were never in in as bad a financial shape as Detroit. I, I was looking at Detroit the other day, and you know they. We had money, but it's just a matter of the procedure that Dennis would not yield and he would not compromise. So consequently, we went into uh, financial uh, arrangement. During this same period? But I'm, I've always thought if I, if I had to do it again, I probably, I probably would have done it differently. How so? I, I think I could have gone to to the members and, and we would have, I think we could have avoided, I've, I've, al I've always thought about that. Could have done something else to make sure that we didn't do that. Dennis would say today that this was all about, and as what he said at the time, this was all about the municipal electric system and CEI's desire to shut it down or, or swallow it up. Is there, a, is there a kernel of truth there? See, I always had their, their eye on that, but that that was not that was not the issue on going into default. That was not the issue in going into default. It was it was the finances uh, that we were confronted with, and the finances were not as bad as uh, we made it made it out to be. But I've I've always thought about it. I, I probably would have done it a little differently, and I I had the the political capital. To have done it, but you know when you you deal with Dennis and you dealt with the sisters and you dealt with Wiseman and you dealt with that all day long, man, you it was not an easy thing to do. Well, during the same the same two year period, the court order desegregation began. You were indicted. Uh, all these things happened to you. You know you were at the center of it, and during a two year period. But the desegregation thing was not. We we avoided that. We did not. We we agreed. Uh, uh, I remember Basil and we the council agreed that we would not let that demagogue preoccupy. And and we we avoided that because a woman in Boston by the name I think Louisa Hicks it, it just tore that city apart. But we agreed that we would not do that. So we avoided that. So we had a lot of things going on. It was, was at the time that I was indicted on the I think it was seven carnival, yes. yeah on the carnival yes. thing yeah yeah and uh, that proved out to be nothing okay but I was busy after 1981 you're reelected you reelected the council again you've been council president eight years long time by Cleveland standards 
your view, your power is now pretty much unquestioned. Uh, you're expected to be reelected to council president yet again. You go to Washington and uh, I believe you were in Washington that day on a, on a trip after the 81 election. And yeah, you come back yeah. <laughs> Mike and while, while you're while you're away. There's a pal there's a little yeah. bit of a palace coup. Lonnie, Lonnie Burton. They elected the they 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 trotted out Lonnie Burton yeah. major, by a, major, a majority of one as as your successor. To, they in effect they overthrew you. Yeah, that's right. Um, you come back to Cleveland and say almost verbatim. I can remember. <laughs> I, I will not lift a finger to do anything about this. This, this is if this is what they want, this is what they will have. And over the course of the next seventy-two hours, so, someone lifted a lot of fingers, and, and, the, and the whole thing fell apart. You have to uh, give credit to Mike White for that. That's correct. You have to give credit to Mike White. Mike. There were people who got their hands dirty in, to, in reversing that. No one got them dirtier than Mike White. Uh, absolutely. No, no question about that. I, was, I went down to visit my daughter and, uh, in D.C. She was in law school. And uh, I was bringing her dog back. And they called me. And Mike called. So let me get back. And... Mike White single-handedly did that. He single-handedly did. Well, we he flipped Larry Jones, who was a councilman. Yeah. Well, Larry was Larry belonged to a church in my ward, and Reverend Smith was the pastor. And I had I had um, uh, gone to Cleveland Cleveland Trust to get the loan for Reverend Smith to rebuild that church. And I remember talking to Brock Weir about it, about it. and Brock Weir said he'd never had a, a, he'd never had a black church to renege on a loan. And, and Brock gave that, that, um, that loan to Reverend Smith. So Reverend Smith, when, Larry was, when Deacon Larry was in the head of the coup, Reverend Smith said, I need to pray for you, son, you know. And he, so, but Mike was, Mike was the person foremost in, in turning that around. And Larry, it turns out, has had a happy ending to his career. Absolutely. He's been a, it's on the Court of Appeals. Absolutely, today. yeah. You left the airport that day after being overthrown. You did not go home. You did not go to City Hall. Do you know where you went? No. You went to Merce's, Merce Cotner's kitchen. And I was... I was eavesdropping at the time, and you sat at the table, and you told Merce, we're not going to lift a finger to stop this, Merce. This is a woman who you had, with whom you had a about a, a 15, 20-year relationship. Just like my mother. Who was, you were as close to as anyone else in Absolutely. this town. Something with which you had almost, on, on, on paper, you had nothing in common with her. Yeah. Uh, talk about her a little bit. She was your clerk of council. No, she's more than that. <laughs> she, she was more than that. She's, I, you know, I, I never dreamed that that um, she and I would become as close as we did. I, you know, we ate lunch every day downtown. Every day that I was, we'd eat lunch, and she was very wise, very wise, and she would stop me from doing crazy things and. Uh, uh, but I knew if I was going to be successful, I needed her with me. Uh, we had a, we shared an office, and she built next to the office we shared. She built me an office next to where we were, and I never would move in because I didn't want I didn't want people thinking that things were going on in that office that should not be going in. So whatever I had to do, I would do it right there in the office with her. And, and not most of the time, she'd sit at the desk, and we'd, 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 whatever deals had to be done, we did them together. 
I had the utmost of respect for her, and she had the utmost of respect for me, and she made sure that I did things right. Mm -hmm. And I was as close to her as I was to my mother. And that was, it was almost a mother-son relationship. And nobody could ever think about it. We went to lunch every day. I remember, I remember uh, Herb Kim, and who was the editor to put Herb, the tall guy? Tom Boardman? They called me at City Hall one day and they wanted to, they wanted to meet with me at the Cleveland Club. And These are two executives from the Cleveland Press. Okay. And I went up to the Cleveland Club. I said, come on, Rich, let's go to, let's go to the Cleveland Club. Tom wanted to talk to me. Herb Cam wanted to talk to me. And I went in and they said, well, there was a private room. They wanted us to go to a private room. I said, we don't need to go to no private room. We they said, well, Merce can't sit in the private room. Merce cannot sit in the room, in the dining room. I never, it was, it was the damnedest feeling. I'm, I'm used to being segregated against, right? I'm not used to anybody else being, so my friend can't sit in the dining room. So they said, well, George, that's all right. She said, she said that's all right, we're sitting, we're sitting in the private room. The first, I, I, it was the damnedest thing I've ever seen, that his, and so they, you know, they kind of apologized for it. But she had been, she had been my friend and we were friends for all those years. 